On my second trip, it was a friendly reminder how hilly that small country is. Monaco is situated on thickly clustered hills. It is a very small sovereign city-state known for its extreme wealth, located on the French Riviera in Western Europe. Your feet are the main mode of transportation around town. There are lots of stairs and escalators throughout this tiny country, which has the longest longevity in the world. They will not die. In this video, we're talking about the longevity commonalities of the rich people in Monaco and the poor Icarian hotspot. Monaco is like a walking gym. This is similar to the hilly Icara Island, but without the cement stairs and escalators. Icara Island, a longevity blue zone, is in Greece and is considered the poorer area of the Icarian Island. Where's it located? up in the mountains in the northeastern area of the island. This is the hot spot of the island that has the most longevity, similar to Monaco. In this video, we're talking about the longevity commonalities, including food, environment, safety, stress, socialization, healthcare, and physical activities. The studies used in this video have their links in the video description. First, I want to clarify why I'm referring to this area of the Akira Island as a hotspot. Tell us, please. There was a study on the whole Akira Island determining it was a blue zone, meaning an area of longevity. But the studies state that most longevity was in this particular area of the island, up in the mountains in the northeastern area of the island. So we're just going to focus on the area where the most longevity is on the island, which I'm calling a hotspot. So it's the hotspot within the blue zone. When tourists visit Icara Island, they can misunderstand how longevity hotspot people live on the island. The hotspot people live different from the way the people live in the tourist sections of the island. Tourists fly in and stay at a vacation rental, rent a car, go to the local market and believe that they're living like a blue zoner. Less than 1% of Icarans have a car and the people who live in the hot spot do not go to the market, but more about that later. Anyway, walking around the hilly town daily is an example of the common behavior in both the poor hot spot of Icara and the rich country of Monaco. In a National Institute of Health study, it states not climbing stairs daily is associated with an increased incident of metabolic syndrome. Metabolic syndrome is a group of conditions that may increase your risk of coronary heart disease, diabetes, stroke, and other serious health problems. Metabolic syndrome is also called insulin resistant syndrome. Icarians have 20% less cancer and 50% less heart disease, according to the Blue Zone Icarian study done by the National Institute of Health. Walking up and down hills and stairs appears to have a longevity health benefit to both Ilya Karens and the Monaco Madagascans. Now let's talk about the population density for longevity. Monaco has a very dense population, about 25,000 people per square kilometer, which is an extreme opposite of the island of Icara at 13 people per square kilometer. Yes, that's about 25,000 people versus 13 people. Not 13,000, just 13 people. So in this case, population density does not seem to determine longevity. Monaco's population is estimated to be around 36,000 people. Its total land area is just over two square kilometers, making it second to the Vatican City as the smallest country in the world. The Akira Islands population fluctuates around 8,400 people, so it appears that population density does not seem to determine longevity in these cases. Now let's take a look at security. There are no entry controls or passport requirements when entering and exiting Monaco. Monaco having a high population density and high wealth can easily be the target of criminals, but it has a climate of absolute security, elevating its prestigious ambiance of a safe place to live. According to security experts, finding a safer place to reside than Monaco would be challenging. The Principality of Monaco maintains a remarkable security infrastructure, featuring one policeman for every 100 residents, and an extensive 24-hour video surveillance network covering the entire territory, including most resident halls. With sophisticated transmission system compared to elite military standards, it has the ability to secure all the country's entry and exit points within minutes. Additionally, surveillance teams operate within the casinos as well as hotels, 
further reinforcing the overall safety measures. The country is surrounded by France on three sides. The fourth side is the ocean. Having a robust police force is a top priority given the extreme wealth of its residences. This helps give Madagascan a feeling of safety and possibly reduces stress. In contrast, Akira has a police station that has remained unused for years. The villagers got together and agreed that they didn't want or need any policing. They do it perfectly well themselves. The island remains one of the safest places to live with crime virtually non-existent. Locals as well as foreign residents, both men and women, feel safe and free to live as they like. Akira having an extremely low population density and being an island surrounded by rough windy seas can contribute to the feasibility of this type of freedom having no police force. Like the people of Monaco, the Akarians live a stress-free lifestyle. Napping. About one-third of the Akarian population live to be over 90 years old. In the Akarian study, almost all participants stated that they nap regularly. Slightly more of the men napped than the women. Interestingly, all Akarians who participated in the study who were over 90 years old said they sleep at noon. People who nap regularly have up to a 35% lower chance of dying from heart disease. It may be because napping lowers stress hormones or rests the heart. It was observed in a National Institute for Health study that people taking a midday nap regularly had less depression compared to those that did not follow that habit. I couldn't find any data on the Monaco population regarding napping and sleep. So if you have any information on this, please share it with our community in the comments. In summary, studies suggested that a midday siesta may reduce a person's risk of death from heart disease, possibly by lowering stress levels. This can contribute to the longevity and 50% lower heart disease in Akira Island. Now let's focus on fasting. I'll drink to that. The people of Monaco care about their health and wellness, including a public interest in fasting. There are many businesses, magazines, and promotions that focus on this. Intermittent fasting has been positively promoted in articles and blogs. Also, nearby fasting retreats are promoted. Monaco has a small Muslim population. The Muslims in Monaco who practice Ramadan are doing a form of fasting. Although Monaco does not have any mosques, Muslims can walk across to France to attend the closest mosque. In the video description is a link to the Monaco Ramadan calendar, which shows the fasting times. As for the Icarians, they have traditionally been fierce Greek Orthodox Christians. The Greek Orthodox Christians religious calendar calls for fasting almost half the year. This caloric restriction is a type of fasting that cuts about 30% of calories out of the normal diet and is proven to slow the aging process in mammals. This is believed to have greatly contributed to their longevity. It is the Greek Orthodox tradition to do a few different types of fasting. One type is called a blood fast. They fast from food products that contain blood. So they fast from meat, fish, dairy products, oil, and wine. The reason they include the oil and wine is because up until the last couple of centuries, oil and wine were stored in the skins of animals. That's why they became part of the blood fast and has continued even though that type of storage is no longer practiced. They can eat shellfish because they do not contain blood. They believe Christ shed his blood for them, so they do not consume any blood or animal products during this fast. Their church has several different fasts throughout the year, resulting in the people fasting almost half of the year. So what's first? First, it is the tradition of the church to fast for the entirety of Great Lent and Holy Week. Next, the week before Great Lent, they are only required to fast from meat, not dairy products. There's another one? No, not just another one. Outside of Lent, it is tradition to fast every Wednesday in honor of the betrayal of Christ and Friday in honor of his crucifixion. Oh, not another one. And there is a 40-day fast that precedes the Feast of Nativity, which is November 15th through December 24th, and a 14-day fast that precedes the Feast of the Domination, which is August 1st to the 14th. No, not another one. And the Holy Apostles Fast, which begins the day after their All Saints Day and lasts through June 28th. Almost half the year is fasting. The result of this fasting by happenstance positively affects longevity and health span. According to a study, in the National Institute of Health in Icaria, the alteration of fasting and refeeding periods is accompanied by positive effects on risk factors for aging, diabetes, autoimmunity, cardiovascular disease, neurodegeneration, and cancer. The National Institute of Health study on fasting states intermittent fasting and periodic fasting are emerging as safe strategies to affect longevity and health span by 
acting on cellular aging and disease risk factors while causing no or minor side effects. Intermittent fasting lasting from 12 to 14 hours and repeated every one to seven days have the potential to prevent and treat disease. Fasting or fasting mimicking diets lead to wide alterations in growth factors in metabolic levels, generating environments that can reduce the capability of cancer cells to adapt and survive, thus improving the effects of cancer therapies. This has most likely also contributed to the lower cancer rate in Icaria. So fasting, however it's done, it helps. All religions are welcome. Can we eat now? Now let's take a look at socialization and community. In Icara, longevity is not just about living a long life. It's about maintaining happiness, well-being, well into old age. Rooted in the island's history, the communal mindset was forged during wartime, and it still persists amongst its inhabitants today. The people of Icara amplify a deep commitment to mutual care, particularly for their elders and their elderly parents. Seniors actively engage in tending to their gardens and participating in family affairs integral to the community's way of life. This shared purpose not only contributes to their physical health and mental sharpness, but also fosters a strong social connection. Icarians regularly gather with friends for shared activities, such as enjoying food and drinks, dancing, making music, playing cards, and participating in various community events and festivals. The community's essence lies in the camaraderie of conversations, shared meals, and recreational pursuits, like backgammon, chess, dominoes. The spirit of Icara is marked by a significant emphasis on mutual assistance, creating a tight-knit and supportive community where homemade wine and alcohol is savored during social gatherings. What about Monaco? In Monaco, the essence of socialization and community is deeply intertwined with the principality's unique characteristics. Despite its small size, Monaco thrives on a vibrant and close-knit community spirit. The residents of Monaco actively engage in social activities, creating a rich tapestry of of connections and shared experiences. One notable aspect of Monaco's social life is the prevalence of high-profile events and gatherings. The Principality hosts numerous prestigious events such as Formula One Grand Prix, cultural festivals, and philanthropic galas. These occasions not only serve as platforms for socializing but also contribute to the sense of community pride. The cultural diversity of Monaco adds to a unique flavor to its social landscape. Diversity. The population consisting of both locals and expatriates brings together people from various backgrounds and nationalities. This cultural blend fosters an open-minded and inclusive community where individuals appreciate and celebrate their differences. Monaco's commitment to luxury and sophistication is reflected in its social scene. Exclusive clubs, fine dining establishments, and upscale entertainment venues provide residents with exquisite settings for socializing. Whether it's an evening at the Monte Carlo casino or a gathering at one of the renowned restaurants, social life in Monaco is infused with elegance and glamour. Beyond the glamorous facade, Monaco also values community well-being. The Principality invests in green spaces, parks, and recreational facilities, encouraging residents to come together in a more relaxed, casual environment. The Prince's Palace, iconic landmarks, and public spaces become focal points for community events, reinforcing a shared sense of pride and identity. In Monaco, socialization is not just a pastime, it's a way of life that seamlessly blends sophistication, diversity, and community spirit. Whether enjoying the cultural festivities, participating in philanthropic endeavors or simply connecting with neighbors, the people of Monaco contribute to a dynamic and socially vibrant community in this glorious enclave. Both Icara and Monaco share a strong sense of community. Now let's talk about the healthcare. Okay, great. Let's, let's do that. Monaco prioritizes healthcare with modern facilities, including the Princess Grace Hospital Center, offering diverse medical services, private clinics cater to varied healthcare needs, collaborating with international experts to provide world-class services. Preventative programs, a social security system, and wellness tourism contribute to a comprehensive healthcare approach supported by research and innovation, reflecting Monaco's commitment to well-being. Monaco's healthcare system is a blend 
blend of modern and medical infrastructure, international expertise, and a commitment to promoting health and well-being. Residents and visitors alike benefit from a comprehensive range of health care services in a setting that reflects the principality's dedication to excellence. Ikea, a very small island, is renowned for its distinctive healthcare approach, combining traditional practices and a healthy lifestyle. The island's emphasis on community and organic diet without processed foods, where single ingredients are used to create delicious meals and an active lifestyle, all contribute to the longevity of the residents. Herbal remedies, primary healthcare services, and strong community support, including emotional well-being for the elderly, showcase Icara's holistic healthcare. While Icara may not have the extensive medical infrastructure of larger urban areas, its healthcare system is characterized by a unique blend of community support, healthy lifestyle practices, and a respect for traditional healing methods. This holistic approach to health has contributed to the island's longevity, well-being of their inhabitants. Everyone cares. Now let's talk about the food. Food in Monaco. The Principality of Monaco boasts a remarkable culinary scene featuring a true Mediterranean diet with exceptional organic dishes, including renowned establishments with chic decor and breathtaking views, all contributing to Monaco's reputation for culinary excellence and glamorous lifestyle. The Principality also features 100% organic markets along with the restaurants showcasing a commitment to organic organic, pesticide-free living. This includes the first ever Michelin-starred 100% organic restaurant, reflecting the population's dedication to a healthy and organic lifestyle. Monaco's longevity is a testament to its organic nutrition, a true Mediterranean diet, and an overall focus on wellness. What about the pork? The pork. Food in Icarian Island. Icarian families take a hands-on approach to their nutrition, where most households farm their own land, growing their own organic fruits, vegetables, variety of olive trees, almond trees, grapevines, and herbs. They do not use pesticides. They create meals from single-ingredient foods picked from their gardens and around town. There are over 150 varieties of wild greens grown in Icaria, that give them a huge variety of vitamins and minerals. Wild greens are a rich source of antioxidants. Also, their olive oil is made from a variety of olives. A rough estimate might fall between the range of 20 to 50 different types of olives in their olive oil. A National Institute of Health study says greater healthful food variety as measured by the U.S. Healthy Food Diversity Index is associated with lower odds of metabolic syndrome. The diversity may protect against the risk of coronary heart disease, diabetes, stroke, and other serious health problems also known as insulin-resistant syndrome. Icarians grow almost everything they eat. They have no processed foods which contribute to the islanders' exceptional health. This commitment to organic farming aligns with the island's tradition of longevity. With over 30% of Icarians living well into their 90s, many reaching the age of 100 without chronic chronic illness or dementia. As a matter of fact, there's no dementia there. This emphasis on organic, nutrient-dense meals complements their active lifestyle and strong sense of community support. The science-based evidence supports the connection between such dietary habits and longevity, highlighting the valuable lessons that can be learned from Icara's approach to food and well-being. It reinforces the idea that a focus on organic, nutrient-rich foods can contribute significantly to a longer and healthier life, irrespective of economic status. Interestingly, despite the rest of the country of Greece's association with the Mediterranean diet, the country as a whole ranks about 41st in global longevity. This paradox is attributed to dietary differences, including the use of pesticides, with observations like meals often being served with French fries, even when not explicitly mentioned on the menu. French fried potatoes? Yep, French fries. The poor Icara hotspot within Greece takes a much different approach to eating. Their focus is on unprocessed, single-ingredient, organic, homegrown, no-pesticide foods. 
Monaco stands out as a wealthy nation with the longest longevity globally with a focus on healthier organic foods. In these cases, when it comes to food and longevity, financial status does not seem to be a factor. While Monaco and the hotspot of Icaria Island have distinct cultural and lifestyle differences, both regions share certain longevity commonalities that contribute to the well-being of their populations. Sure. Monaco emphasizes a pesticide-free, true organic Mediterranean diet, which includes a variety of fresh fruits, vegetables, whole grains, olive oil, and fish. The Icarian Island hotspot focuses on traditional Icarian diet, rich in locally sourced pesticide-free, organic, and unprocessed foods, including a huge variety of greens, vegetables, fruits, olive oil created from several different kinds of olives, and fish. Aren't they poor? Monaco provides opportunities for an active lifestyle with outdoor activities, sports, and recreational options. Icaria Island has a cultural culture of physical activity, including walking, gardening, and other activities. Monaco has a strong community engagement with several social and community events throughout the year, fostering a sense of connection and well-being. Icaria Island has a strong community with strong bonds, mutual support, and social engagement contributing to mental and emotional health. Monica focuses on wellness as reflected in the presence of organic markets, restaurants, organic hair salons, and a commitment to a healthy lifestyle. Icara Island emphasizes on holistic well-being, incorporating traditional healing practices, and a balanced approach to life. Monaco's social gatherings, events, and a sense of purpose contribute to overall well-being. Icarans have a strong sense of community, purposeful living, and socializing with friends and family. Let's take a look at the takeaways we can possibly incorporate in our daily lives. The commonalities include include in these two places daily hilly walking, which studies have shown have a positive effect on longevity. We can incorporate taking the stairs instead of the elevator or escalator. Fasting, both intermittent and periodic fasting have a positive effect on health. We can reduce our eating window as a starter, only eating within a 10 hour window and 14 hours off, reducing it down to maybe an eight hour window and 16 hours off. There's a lot of approaches and we can just take baby steps, picking what's best for each of us individually. Being a social butterfly with positive friends and family can contribute towards communal well-being. Monaco and Icara have opposite approaches to security, but both methods result in a stress-free environment fitting to that area's profile. Napping possibly contributes to the longevity of the Icarans. Organic, pesticide-free foods, nothing processed, Meals just created with single ingredients have a positive effect on longevity. We can go to the market and just hit the vegetables, salads, eggs, fish, meat, single ingredients for a healthy meal, including herbs, spices, staying away from more than one ingredient. <laughs> Whether they're rich or poor, it doesn't seem to determine longevity. Anyone can take one step at a time towards longevity. What's your first baby step? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you.